This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. My giving is a result of what God has already done because my giving is now a worship and a thanksgiving and a gratitude for Jesus. I take what he blessed me with and I turn around and pass the heart test and say, now I bring what you've blessed me and I use it to worship you. I use this as a reason to say thank you. I use this as a reason to say I give you glory. I use this as a reason to say I worship you. Amen. Ladies, are you ready to find your worth? This is an awesome experience. It's amazing. Join us for three life-changing days at the 2020 Worth Radical Women's Conference, March 19th through the 21st, and learn just how valuable you are. Mark my words, this is going to be epic. Register today for this radical event at taffydollar.org or text RADICAL to 51555. Anytime you go after the benefits, it's not going to be what you think it is it's going to be. And I want you to look at your relationship with God. You pray because you're still trying to get some benefit. You come to church because you're still trying to get some benefit. You sing and praise Him because you're still trying to get some benefits. When is it ever going to be, I just want you? When is it going to be? Paul, the teacher of grace, said, here's what I want more than anything. I want to know you, and I want to know the fellowship of your suffering. In other words, I want to do my part. I want to know you. I want to know you. When are we going to get to the point as Christians where we're just going to be satisfied by knowing him? But that ain't enough. That ain't enough to know him. You need to do something for me. You, 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 you up there, what have you done for me lately? Bum, bum, bum. No, no, no. And if, if, if that's the only reason you have a relationship with God because you want to see what benefits you can get, I tell you, you're going to walk away from that relationship. You're not going to be there. It's not going to last very long. We'll see you one season, and you'll be gone the next season because it didn't work. Well, I tried that, but that didn't work. I prayed, but that didn't work. I gave, and that didn't work. I danced, and that didn't work. And until you get to the place where I don't care nothing about the benefit of peace or nothing, I know I got him as long as I got him. See, you don't understand that the benefits are not too far behind the relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Am I telling you that your giving is no longer going to yield a harvest? No, what I'm telling you is if you keep giving, if you keep giving financially motivated by the benefit, you never ain't going to see, you ain't going to see nothing. But if you seek him first, yeah. then all these other things will be added to you. Man. And you can't fool God. Man. Well, I'm going to act like he first so I can get the benefits. You're still benefit driven. Yeah. Until you let all that go and you say, you know what? I want you. I want you. Take my car away. I want you. I'm in a ditch right now, and it ain't a pretty situation, but I got you. They both shine. That's that relationship with him that makes it worthwhile. I'm not going back to a benefit-driven life. Turn to two people and tell them, I'm in it for the relationship. I'm in it for the relationship. Yes, yes, yes. A relationship with God is the ultimate goal. And even though the benefit of forgiveness and joy and peace and all those things increase, look at what he said in 1 Peter chapter 3, 18. I'm in it for the relationship. If, if I can get every member of World Changers to dismiss the motivation that comes by benefits from God and just seek God for the intimacy, 
Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. Look what he says. For Christ also had once suffered for sins. Well, why did he suffer for sins? The just for the unjust. Why? That he might bring us to God, not that he might bring us to our Bentley. Not that he might bring us to our new house. Not that he might bring us to our increase. Not even that he might bring us to our peace and our joy. And I mention peace and joy because those are, those are benefits, but they come out of a relationship. Look what he says in the New Living Translation. Christ suffered. He suffered so he can bring us to God, so he can bring us to a relationship, so he can bring us to what real Christianity is about. Christianity is not a religion. It's not all other religions requires you to do something in order to get something. All other religions require a, 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 a quid pro quo. It requires you to scratch God's back in order to put him to scratch your back. All other religions say you got to do this in order for that to happen. This is not a religion. I hate religion. This is not a religion. This is a relationship. Christianity is a relationship. Extra, extra, read all about it. Christianity is a relationship. Amen. It's not about your house and your car and your peace and your joy and you feeling better and helping you not to kill yourself. It's not about that. It's about a relationship. Don't you understand? Don't you see? Get the relationship and all those other things are right behind. It can be insulting for you to try to benefit where there is no relationship. My children can ask me for stuff out of relationship, and you try to come and get the benefit, and you don't have no relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Christ suffered for our sins once for all times. He never sinned, but he died for sinners. Why? Why did Christ die for sinners? To bring you safely home to God. He was hungry for a relationship with us, and we were just hungry for the benefit. And you know one thing about it? It, it never, it, it's never satisfying. You think it is. But without him, I mean, what is Christianity? What, is it, what does it mean to be a Christian? We're all going to die one day. We're all going to die one day. That's for sure. You ain't got to believe that. We all going to die one day. <laughs> oh, yes, she is. <laughs> and when that happens, You don't want to stand before the benefactor knowing that all you ever wanted from him is what he could do for you. God, I want him. And I'm no longer waking up every day looking for my check in the mailbox. I'm no longer waking up every day seeing if this happens, seeing if that happened. And so if he didn't heal me of the cold in 24 hours, I, I, I want him. I want him when I'm up. I'm up him when I'm down. I want him when I'm, when I'm feeling bad. He brings a smile on my face anyway. I want him. I want him. He doesn't have to do another thing. He's already done enough. He saved me. He sanctified me. He filled me with the Holy Spirit. He made me the righteousness of God. He cleansed me with his blood. And maybe that's not enough for some people to want to join the church. But in a world changes nation, we're now after God. We're pursuing him. We're pursuing him. And when people finally look at you and say, what's going on in your life? I noticed that a lot of stuff is happening in your life. I noticed that the blessing, you look like you're just blessed. And you're like, you know what? I just thank God, but, but I'm in love with Jesus right now. I'm in love with Jesus right now. Let me show you something. We can exhaust money. We can exhaust sex. And we can exhaust jobs. 
but we'll never be able to exhaust God. He gives us one thing that will never, that, that will never run out. You'll run out of money. He gives us one thing that will never run out. He'll give us one thing. He gave us one thing that'll never get old. He gave us one thing that'll never fail. Himself. He can't be taken from us. He can't be taken from us. I got God. And I talk to him, he talks to me. I got God. The blessing comes out of a right relationship with God. I'm already blessed. Go back to um, Romans 4, verse uh, 14 in the NLT. The blessing is a gift. It's a finished work of Jesus Christ. The blessing is a gift. It's a finished work of Jesus Christ. Somebody says, well, healing is a blessing. No, healing is a result of the blessing. It's the, it's the benefit that comes out of a right relationship. Verse 14, if God promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary, and the promise is pointless. Read that verse in the King James. He says that if this was given, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise is made of none effect. That's the reason why the promise is no effect in the lives of a lot of Christian people, because they keep trying to do something to deserve it. Verse 15, <clears throat> because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Verse 16, Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Read that verse in the, in the NLT, please. To the faith of Abraham. Verse 16, and the NLT says this. <clears throat> so the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. It's given as a free gift. It's a free gift. You keep trying to do something to get it. The blessing, the promise of the blessing is a free gift. Now watch this. I ask God, so why give? Why give? Because all my life I heard you give to get. If you want to get blessed, you got to give. You give to get blessed. You give to get. You give to get blessed. Well, if I have to give in order to get blessed, then that's no longer a gift. I am now having to do something in order to have the blessing. And he said I get the blessing by receiving it by faith. But all my life in every religious circle I've ever been a part of, you give to get blessed. I was in a meeting one time, Taffy and I, and they were trying to raise an offering up. This lady said, I hear the Lord say Visa and MasterCard. I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> I said, is heaven so bankrupt that now he's telling you you can use your... And I thought, I thought, this is crazy. But I didn't, I didn't know anything because I didn't understand the grace, so I couldn't see the truth of it. And, and then they showed all of the scriptures about, you know, if you give, then this will happen. And if you give, then that will happen. But that was secondary to the primary. I'm not telling you that your harvest won't come. I'm telling you, if you keep giving out of the wrong motivation, your harvest won't come. If it was as simple as give and it shall be given unto you, there would be no financial problems amongst the people of God. Because y'all come to church and you give. It was that simple, give and it shall be given to you. And I know for a fact there are a lot of you who have given and it hadn't been given to you. Can I get a witness? Yeah. <laughs> and somebody told you, you just didn't have enough faith. 
And the reason why you gave and it wasn't given to you is because you didn't have enough faith. The reason why is you didn't have enough faith. If you'd had enough faith when you were tithing, then you'd be walking in the blessing. It's not true. It's not true. And so we give because we think it's necessary for us to be blessed. And then they say, if you don't give, you're going to be cursed with a curse. You know, the curse was coming because you didn't give your tithes and offerings. And if you don't bring your tithes and offerings, then you're cursed with a curse. God dog it. So you better, you better, you better give or you're going to be cursed by 12 o'clock. That, that, that's, not, that's not true under this new covenant. I just knew this wasn't God, and that's the thing that protects you. When you have an intimate relationship with God, eventually, eventually, he'll lead you to this place, and you'll say, I knew, I knew that wasn't quite right, God. See, there's something about me. I carry this, I don't know what you call it, this, this I don't know, I don't even know if I should be putting godly in front of fear but it's the only way I can kind of describe it. This, I, this kind of like godly fear of reverence. What if I'm wrong? And then that keeps me studying and keep me studying. What if this is not quite right? And it keeps me going and it keeps me going. So don't dog me out because I taught it wrong in the past. At least thank God that I kept studying it and I kept studying it and I kept studying it and I kept studying it. And I'm not afraid to get up and say, hey, that wasn't right. Now check this out. We're in it for the relationship. I'm in it for the relationship, praise God. Every man according as he's purposed in his heart, so let him give as he's pur pur purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or unwillingly. See, I used to give unwillingly. I just gave because I fear of, of being cursed or I gave in order to get blessed. So every time I gave, it was out of necessity. And most every time you gave, it was out of necessity. He says, don't give out of necessity. He said, don't give grudgingly, unwillingly, willingly, or of necessity. Don't give of necessity. Why do you think it's necessary for you to give? In order to get? No. Giving is not about giving. I do not give to get blessed. I give because I'm already blessed. My giving is a result of what God has already done because my giving is now a worship and a thanksgiving and a gratitude for Jesus. I take what he blessed me with and I turn around and pass the heart test and say, now I bring what you've blessed me and I use it to worship you. I use this as a reason to say thank you. I use this as a reason to say I give you glory. I use this as a reason to say I worship you. Amen. Thank you, Father. And while it might not be as much as I thought it was going to be, at least God bless me. And I got to, I got to pause and say thank you for where I am. Amen. Thank you for what I got. We want to keep going without pausing to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you that I'm healed. I present to you a body that's well, so I'll use it to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. I'll, pre I'll, I'll present to you a mind that's at peace, so I'll hear your revelation. I'll present to you money that was given to me from righteous labor, and I'll take what is yours. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have you given me, and I use it to worship you. My giving Amen. is not a quid pro quo. It's my worship. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Glory to Amen. God. I don't quite know what's going on with me, but I'm going to preach the truth. If you take it, take it. If you don't, don't. There's got to be a preacher out there that will preach stuff you want to hear, and you're going to do that. I, I, I'm in love with Jesus. And I don't know how long I got on the planet, so I'm going to spend my time getting to know him. So when I finally get to heaven, I won't walk past him because I don't know him. But I'll run right into his loving arms because 
This is the one that I fellowship with every day. God loveth a cheerful giver, a grateful, thankful giver. What, what, what is worship? Giving is for, it's an act of worship. Giving is an, an act of honor. Proverbs 3 and 9 real quick. Giving is an act of worship. It's an act of honor. It's not, I give to get. And that's why so many Christians don't walk around with the evidence of the blessing in their life is because they keep trying to deserve it. It's because they've turned their giving to a quid pro quo. It's because they keep trying to do something to manipulate the hand of God rather than sitting in the face of God and getting to know him. Spend my life as a Christian and not even be real? <laughs> well, preacher, how do you think we're supposed to respect what you say and you ain't even got a suit on? <laughs> Brother, that's between you and God. <laughs> I wore the suit so much because I was told that if you're a preacher, you're supposed to wear a suit. If you're judging me because of my dress, you know how small you are? No, I'm going to say it like this. You don't know God. Amen. Amen. If you're judging me because of this new tattoo I got, I'm just playing. I just want to see. Like, see, look at y'all. Look at y'all. Oh, look at y'all. I was doing it. I know I'm leaving this church right now. I got to go now. You don't know God. You don't know God, because he's not like that. You have been infected with religion that draws you away from a relationship back to a bunch of rules and regulations to suck you back into the law. I ain't going back. Whom the sun sets free. It's free indeed. Look at this. Nine, honor the Lord with thy substance. Ooh. And with the first fruit of all thine increase. Somebody says that's spiritual substance. I told y'all about that. Go to, go, to, go to the King, go to the New Living Translation. Honor the Lord with thy substance. He's talking about spiritual substance. Honor him with your lifting hands. Honor him with your hand claps. He says, honor the Lord with your wealth. Come on, keep going. The Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible. No, no, that, that's your, your spiritual wealth. That's your... Holy leave you well. <laughs> Come on, Amplified Bible, Proverbs 3 and 9. It shall be, verse 9, honor the Lord with your capital. Oh, that's money. Cash. Ain't no, no spiritual money won't pay your gas bill. <laughs> honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labor, not from selling weed. Well, it's legal now. Don't, don't throw that in my face about being legal. Well, I smoke weed now because it's illegal. You're a slave to something. A cookie is legal, but it doesn't mean you, you need to enslave yourself into it. Well, I use it for medical purposes. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Get healed. <laughs> now you're trying to substitute weed for the healing power of God. Stop. You're a man of excuses, and people that make excuses reside in the realm of failure. Excuses are nothing but nails used to build houses of failure. So, so what's worship? Not quite, baby. What's worship? And now listen to this now. Worship may be described as an expression of devotion and love from, my, from man, the, create, the creation, to God, the creator. What's coming from you to him? We're always trying to get something from him to us. 
what's coming from you to him. There is no genuine worship without gift giving. You can worship God in song, and you can worship God with lifted hands, you can worship God with the dance, but it's not complete without giving. Success is something we all want, but very few of us understand. True success is not defined by money and fame. The truest kind of success begins with God's undeniable presence in our lives. We want you to experience the God kind of success. Your relationship with God is going to take the foolishness out of you. It's going to convince you that's not the best thing to keep doing. It is your right relationship with God that will expose you to the benefit of the blessing. My success comes from me believing in what Jesus has already provided for me. You can also receive today's full message for only $7. Or for $50, you can receive the Grace-Based Success Collection. This popular set includes the Grace-Based Success CD Series, the Fight the Fear of Giving CD Series, and the Financial Stewardship Midi Book. Order now at CreflodollarMinistries.org or call the number on the screen for more information. I want to see what God has for me. I want to pursue what God has for me. Whatever I need to do in order for God to do what he needs to do, I'm going to do it. Bless God. Dallas, Texas, in Chicago, Illinois. Creflo Dollar presents Change Experience 2020. Are you ready for your change? <laughs> you feel like you walk and it's like an earthquake going across the mirror. Just to be saturated in the Word with some teaching for like an extended period of time, that's just something you got to get into. There's some stuff that won't be the same when you return back home. You honestly think that God needed you in order to fix it, but what God needed you to do is to rest. Don't miss this free event April 24th at 7 p.m. in Dallas, Texas, and June 12th at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. in Chicago, Illinois. Seats are limited. Don't delay. Go online and register now. Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, he's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you, you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes. 